Today we're gonna make a training video on how to repair PlayStation 2 controllers. It's a regular PlayStation 2 DualShock. We're gonna test it and see what's wrong with it. This is a SCHP10010. Uh, most of them just have the same model number, but what really matters is this letter. This is going to determine what the problem is and how to fix it. This is the H, so it's called this the H model. And uh, we have a few that we're going to go over and see what's wrong with each one. First, we're going to we're going to I'm going to plug it into a computer using a USB adapter to a PlayStation 2. Okay, so here is what that looks like. Alright, so <clears throat> let's see. Bumper buttons, nothing. Triggers, nothing. D-pad up, down, left, right. Oh, the right D-pad works. See that? There's motion there. And you push the right D-pad. Square button works triangle nothing circle nothing x nothing so basically this is just the d-pad and the square um select and start will work they normally work they're normal thing also the analog will work so i'm going to test that to make sure they're center and they're moving smoothly so the r3 work all right, so basically the, the only thing that works on the button side of the house are select and start, the right D-pad, and square. That's about it, okay? So in this controller, basically a lot of buttons do not work. I'm just going to set this aside here. Let's grab another one. Same deal, H model. You see that? H. It's very important because that's what's going to determine how we're going to fix it. Let's plug it in. Let's take a look at the screen again. And let's see what happens. Shoulder buttons, nothing. Triggers, nothing. Up, down, left, right, nothing. Square, triangle, circle, X. None of the button works. Select and start will work. See a pattern here? Select and start work in two controllers and the analog also work and when you push them they work see the pattern here these two buttons work and the analog work fine none of these buttons or these work at all let's try another one same model same letter okay let's see if the pattern is the same let's plug it in Let's see what happens here. Trigger buttons don't work. Bumper buttons don't work. Oh, what square works? Wait, no, no. It's actually X that works in this one. And then every once in a while, a whole other button, a whole row pushes. So it goes push. So triangle doesn't work. Circle doesn't work. Left, nothing, right. Oh, right works. So triangle and circle. Wait, no, triangle, uh, sorry, uh, right and X. Up, down, nothing. Analog work. Thumbsticks work when you push them. Select and start, always worked. See the pattern? Analog always work. Select and start not working. Let's grab another one. Same model, H model. See that? All right, this one, there's something rattling inside of the controller and the thumbstick is chewed up. So this will have to be replaced. Also, this is really scratched. So this part, uh, the top shelf will be replaced. Uh, all the screws are in there. Bottom shelf looks good. Let's plug this in and see what happens. Oh, look at that. All the buttons are pushed in. So this is kind of the opposite as the other 
stack that we tested. On this, everything is automatically pushed in, except for select and start. I bet this will work, see? And the analogs, they work fine. D-pad does not work, it's all, see the pattern here? Button problems, either they're pressed down continuously, or when you press it, they don't work at all. Same pattern. Let's grab one more. Same model. Same problem. This one, like the last one, coincidentally, all the buttons are pressed. Let's see. Let's unplug it and replug it. Yep, same deal. Same deal. See the pattern? The, anal the analog always work, the thumbstick always works, select and start always work. Then these other buttons, none of them work or some of them work, but there's always some button problem. Another one, again, H model. Let's plug it in. And look at the analogs, perfect. Uh, actually, this analog, it's a little loose. It's not as springy. See how springy this one is? This one is less. It's more worn out. So this analog, even though it works, it feels weak, worn out. So I'm gonna replace it. The actual joystick, not not uh, not just the thumbstick, but the actual internal component. They do work, but for consist consistency, so they're the same, you know, feeling and I'm changing. Let's take a look at the bumpers. Oh, look. One bumper button works, finally. Nothing here. Oh, this controller has been taken apart. This button feel tight. So somebody took this apart, I'm gonna put it back together. They didn't um, assemble the button right and it's probably, yep, let's see, that's all wrong and bent. So we're gonna to have to replace this part. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't work. Same thing here. So somebody assembled this uh, with the triggers, with this plastic on, and then this thing got pushed in like that. And it stayed like that for years. So it's deformed now, but it, actually this one works, but I'm gonna replace it because it's it's deformed. It's not flat anymore. Like it's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be flat and it's like pushed up. All right, let's take a look at the other buttons here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, d-pad, dead, select and start, will work, actually, this start, oh, I see, I see what's going on, this one is so worn out that the plastic here, there is like a indentation, someone was pushing this really hard, it's probably just dirty, but because this is worn out, I'm going to replace the top shell, and we're gonna probably replace the um, silicone pad, just like this. They're in bad shape, I bet. But that's not the, the main problem, it's the same problem as all these other controllers. I got one more to test, and then we'll move on to the repair. This one here is also an H model, and the reason why I'm going to... Actually, no, this is an A model, never mind, see, A. It's a different controller, and this one actually works. It works perfect. But we're not gonna open this. First of all, it works, and second of all, inside is different. But this one works fine. Yeah, everything works, and it's in good shape, and it, it works. So I'm just gonna set this aside for when we're doing the A model, which has a uh, different set of issues as the H model. There's, there's three, H, M, and A. The H is the one that has button problems. So let's open one of the H models now. Let's grab this one. Let's see, out of curiosity, let's see what was the problem again. Okay, so this is the one that um, I took the triggers out because it's all worked. And 
I hope all these buttons don't work. So let's, uh, this is in bad shape too. And it's been taken apart before. And look, it's missing screws here and here. So I'm not surprised. So let's, let's open it up and see what's going on. It's missing three screws, which we will replace. And we will replace the shell as well. Okay, so let's remove the back. Back is in good shape. And put it on the side. And let's see what we got here. And also remove this. They don't need to be in there. All right. So when you open the H model controllers, you're gonna run into two things. Um, controllers that this connector is crimped in or pressed in and you cannot remove this part which is what's broken this is what's actually broken and I'm gonna tell you why uh, I removed this one for another control that's why it's all melted like that because you have to use the heat gun to remove it so if this part here is doesn't have a latch to remove the ribbon cable you have to desolder that and solder a new connector and here is that connector it's an 18 pin connector and to fix it we're gonna use this part the SA1Q43A uh, there is a 42A and a 43A the, it has to be the uh, 43A okay so these are the two parts you'll need Basically, that's gonna replace the other connector that goes like this, pretty much. And then this gets solder in here, and then we're gonna do that. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the side. Then the other type of H controller, which is sadly the minority, you'll see actually. Um, it looks like this. Here's one from another day. See this one, there is a latch you can undo and you can just connect your um, ribbon cable like that and then close the latch like this, boom, and you're done, you fix the controller. Uh, sadly, 99% of the time it's going to be that rather than this. So when you open it, if this is black, eat that. And you're gonna have to desolder it and solder a new one and this is white or beige actually um, then you just need to replace it it's the same part the same um, ribbon cable so let's take a look at this and see why it's not working one more screw put this aside let's remove the core so we already earlier determined that this controller um, this top needs to be replaced because it's worn out here and then this 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 piece uh is this selecting star is the only one that work and it's really dirty so i'm just gonna throw it away because i have many more all right so these are super worn out on bent see how um this thing has a it's almost it's like a bite mark in it see how worn out that is there's even a hole in it and it's paint so trash all right so here is my controller this pulls out like this and like this now to get it out of there you have to desolder it so before we get into that let's talk about this part here and why it dies um, after a lot of testing what I learned is that this controller the these buttons okay so this is your d-pad and this is your triangle uh, square circle X select start the analog button and these are your triggers basically okay so as you can see there is um, this the buttons have a like a this rectangular part here is actually a potentiometer. There's a resistor in between here and here. Normally it's like 10K, 
and I'll show you what I mean. Um, let's see, let's take a multimeter and test this real quick. So here's one that I already desoldered. It's the same thing. And let's see if we can see both the multimeter and the port. All right. So if I put my leads on any of these pads, watch, 18K. 18K. 18,000 ohms. 18,000 ohms. Triangle button, 18,000 ohms. X, 18,000 ohms. Uh, circle. See the pattern? It's pretty much 18K all over the place. Okay, so now this is a new replacement part. Let's see what the resistance is. 10K. 13K. 12. You see the pattern? It's half of the bad one. So what's happening is that um, over time, the graphite, this is metal graphite, resistance changes from around 10K to up to 18K. And then when it's too high, it stops working. Uh, these buttons are not just switches, they're potentiometers. The only buttons that are actually push, push switches are the select and the start. As you can see here, there, there's nothing between them. So when you push the actually silicon pad, you're closing the circuit. And that's why this works because there's no resistance. So it doesn't matter if this changes over time because all you're doing is just bridging the gap. Now here, the gap is always bridged. And when you press the um, silicon pad, let me bring one up so I can show you what's happening. Um, so here's the silicon pad from one of the triggers. See, there's a little graphite dome here. They're not flat, they're like a dome. See, see that shape? It's like a dome right there. So when you push that rubber piece, it gets flattened. So the circumference, as you push it, gets bigger. And the larger it gets over this rectangular, uh, you change the resistance. So it basically changes from whatever is 10 originally when there's no press to let's say 11, 12 or, or, or lower. I don't know if it's higher or lower, but it changes. And um, I think it actually goes up. So when, when you close these two and the resistance changes, the controller has a chip that can sense that. And that's how the controller works, basically. So on this one, over time, this, this, I don't know if it's air, contact with air or dust. You know, I tried cleaning that with alcohol. I tried to rub that uh, contact with, it, um, with different things to see if it will, and not the resistance will not change no matter what I did. And that, that's the problem, the resistance is too high. So there, there's nothing you can do, you just have to replace this. And by the way, I bought a ton of these. I bought like 400 of these little replacements. And a lot of times the replacements do not work. And the reason why they do not work is because of the same reason this one doesn't work. Like this particular part here in the middle, notice this, there's no button. This is, this is your start button. And this is your um, square button. You notice this button here in the middle? There is no, there's nothing in between um, start and square, but there's a button here. So what's that? That's just like um, an extra contact. But if this contact is broken or the resistance is too high, then none of the buttons will work, except for obviously these three here that, as we said before, they're different. So this, if you follow this uh, little trace here, if you if you go see how it splits, goes to the left and then goes to the right. So if you follow it, see it connects all the buttons together. It goes there and then it goes there. It connects all the buttons together. And then if you follow it the other way, it does the same thing. It goes, see the last line and then it connects this to that, to that, there, there, and there. 
So that's why when this thing doesn't work, everything dies because this literally connects all the buttons to ground to the controller via this connector. And a lot of times they don't work. Like I bought, look how many I got that don't work. Out of this batch, I think there was like a hundred, only like 10, 15 worked. Luckily, I bought like 400, so I'll be able to get some work done, but this is, you know, some major BS. I'm gonna have to contact the seller and get my money back or something. But anyway, <clears throat> so back to uh, the what needs to be done to fix the controller. All right, so what needs to be done here is uh, we need uh, hot air to remove this connector, which is what I'm gonna do. Let's turn on my hot air gun. Let's give it a few seconds here. So you wanna make sure these two pieces are away from each other. Uh, since, since this is ruined, what I seriously suggest, so you don't melt this when you're heating this area, is just to cut it off cut it that way this you can work on this by itself like that and we're gonna throw away this part anyway and then this part is garbage so get rid of it okay my hot air gun is hot let's um wedge this thing here uh, let's just heat it up for about i don't know it takes like 30 seconds for the whole thing to melt if you melt the connector, it's fine because it's junk. Just gotta make sure everything desolders at the same time so you don't lift a trace. Hopefully this won't happen here, but if it does, oh well, you're gonna make mistakes. That's how you learn. Okay, the connector's starting to melt, so this is gonna come up pretty soon. All right, it's coming off nicely. There you go, it fell off. All right, <coughs> done with my hot air, so I'm gonna clean my contact. Contacts with alcohol. So I can see what I'm doing next. Right. Another pass. And I'm going to take my soldering iron and clean up these pins a little bit. Let's just remelt the remaining solder that's in there. So it's nice and flat. Normally this whole process takes just like 12 minutes from beginning to end, like opening the controller, testing, replacing the pin, and closing the controller. I time myself doing it and that's it. All right, so I'm primed to add the connector. So let's find my connector, which I put right here. So here's one thing you need to know. This, there are 19 pins in here, and this thing has 18 pins. And this has also 18 pins. So, there's a problem. There's an extra pin because this thing has 19. The old one has 19, and there's 19 here. So, there is a pin that doesn't get used. Why is that? First of all, the pin that doesn't get used, it is this one right here, the first one. So, when I solder my connector, I am going to shift my connector to the right and not use that, see? Leave it empty and solder like that. The reason why that is not needed, it's because if you look at the original connector here, that's the first pin that doesn't get used. If you follow that wire, see it's the first wire here, okay? Let's just do that real quick. If you follow it, 
trace it all the way up here goes all around the controller doesn't connect to anything up here and it just goes down goes around here comes around here still not connecting to anything goes down here all around that still not connecting to anything goes here goes around all the way the damn thing goes up here comes down and it's still not connecting to anything and it's still, and it's still one on the edge and then boom what the i don't know why they did that but it's just that see that end it doesn't go back up here so it's not connected to anything so you don't need it they do sell a 19 pin connector and here's that see it has an extra pin if you put them side by side, it has an extra pin. And you can solder this, and because the replacement part has 18 pins, there's gonna be a gap here. So all you need to do is, this is the 19 pin. So all you gotta do is shift it to the right, like that. That way the uh, first pin is, uh, disconnected or not in use so you can use the 19 and then just lined up every pin and solder each one like that or you can use the 18 pin and then just shift it to the right so that's the first thing you need to do on this repair so I'm gonna use the 18 because why solder one more the other thing you have to do is you have to make a modification on this because this is not identical to this. Um, and the part that's different is up here on the trigger. So if I put the old one on top of the new one, you will see that the new one is wider up here. It's like a millimeter wider on each side. So you have to cut it with scissors. See how this one has that right angle cut and this one has that extra material here okay so that extra material will not make this part go flat here it will be warped like that and if you leave it like that when you close the controller this warp ribbon cable will touch this it will be too close and the triggers will be pressing uh, automatically so you don't want that so Let's fix my part. Just gonna slice off a little bit on the side, a millimeter on each one. See how much I cut? Just that little hair. Cut it off. Uh, same thing on the other side. Uh, you don't need that. Same thing here. And then cut that. If I had a like a hole puncher that will just cut out a little square right there and right there, I would I wouldn't just cut straight. I will just like completely cut out a little half circle area here and there. But there isn't a precise way to do it with a hole puncher. I tried. So now this fits in here. So before I put it in, I'm going to solder my connector. So the first thing I do is I'm going to add a little bit of soldering to the first pin. There you go, just a tad. So I can actually line the pin and solder that first. It's going to be my guide pin. There it is. It's in there. All right, the connector is attached. So now we just gotta solder each pin, just like I did the first one. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to each one. See if I can do this with the phone in front of me. We're gonna have to do this video again with a top-down view in the future. We're gonna do every PlayStation controller ever made. PS1, 2, 3, and 4, and all the subdivisions and sub models. And we're gonna fix each one, no matter what the problem is. 
So when I am shooting other controllers, we'll redo this. We'll do it by model. All right, let's see. It's kind of far away from me, so I don't see it quite well. So I'm sure mistakes will be made, but that's okay. I'll just revisit it. Let's see. This is by far the hardest part, and it takes like 20 seconds. Normally I have the magnifying glass, and this part really close to me, but I can't, so I can um, show it. Hard to film without having a whole bunch of gear. Okay, so let's check my work. Let's see. Let's put that on the magnifying. Nothing is bridged. Now, I'm going to test my work, because those can be deceiving. Let's make sure that they're all attached. Oh, this one is loose. Two are loose. Three are loose. So I can see now why it's loose. I didn't add it up. Solder. And the other one was this one. I'm going to reheat all the ones in the middle. Just a tiny a little bit of solder. Let's take uh, a look again. Check my work. All these controllers that we tested earlier, they all can be fixed by replacing that part. It's all the same. I'm gonna show you now. All right, so let's take a look at this over here. Uh, let's take a look at the computer. Let's see if we can get both to show. All right, so I'm gonna connect this back so there's no connectors, uh, I mean, there's no ribbon cable yet. So I'm gonna connect this to the computer and because there are no buttons, all these are gonna lit up. And that's what, it, what happens when this is unplugged or when this part of the controller cannot detect this, which one of the controllers in that stack over there, it's doing. So it can't detect this because this is completely dead, 100%. So now I'm gonna plug it in and all the all the buttons are going to turn off. There you go. So that controller is pretty much fixed now. We just have to reassemble. We're gonna test it real quick. I'm gonna see. See, see, oh, look at that. See, it's working. Working. Let's test the right bumper. Wait, it's not in the right place. There it is. There it is. And yeah, it looks to work. So we just gotta reassemble. This is literally fixed. So unplug that. This can stay plugged in, it doesn't matter. So let's put this back together. This is a little sticky there, so I'm gonna clean it. Make this controller the best that it can be. Alright, so we pass this through here. And then there is a little tab here that you gotta push the controller ribbon cable through. And in here too. And that uh, keeps it where it needs to be. And we fold this in here. So remember the part that we cut? If we didn't cut this part, it wouldn't fit. So now it's where it needs to be. So now the next thing we need to do is attach this. This thing has a little lip and that part is the one that goes up. There 
you go. That's done. I need another one of those. Uh, there is. Same thing here, the lip part goes up. Hold it down, stretch it over, and we got that. <clears throat> so now <clears throat> we're going to put these two pieces together. cable position where it needs to be. So now this controller looks like this. Rumble go in here. So now this two needs to be connected. <clears throat> I'm gonna use long nose pliers to hold this and just connect it because I can have big hands. There you go. See how all the buttons went off and now if I start pushing the ones that have the silicon pad they will work. See these four? There you go. So now we take our brand new um, front panel, which I had, which I don't have here. Oh, well, I have to go downstairs and get a button. I just have to reassemble that. I don't have to show that. You know how to put together a controller. And then this controller, it's fixed. Let's take a look, look. Let's put the D-pad, see? Uh, whoops, not in the middle, there it goes. There you go. Right, left, and up, down. It's the analogs, they're never had a problem to begin with. And now the rest of the buttons, let's see. If I just need to go and get a shell for this and the controller it's done so now we just gotta do the same thing to all those they it's the same thing you gotta replace this part broken part where this these two are crimped together they don't come apart no matter what you do just press into it so you gotta remove the old connector put in the new connector and you need the this part number. And then as long as you have that and you put it together, then it will be fine. We'll make another one with another controller. 